Hi everyone and welcome to this video about validity versus reliability. Now it's really important that you understand these two concepts and can kind of differentiate between the two um, because it is kind of embedded throughout the course. So you need to be able to look at data and representations of data um, and to kind of consider whether it's valid or reliable and also why. So let's get started with some definitions. So validity is whether a test actually measures what it's claiming that it measures. So for example, um, a questionnaire could be measuring people's attitudes towards racism, but does it actually measure if they're racist or if they're able to give socially acceptable answers? Because if you have a question that's you know, are you a racist? People, you know, could be tempted to lie because it's not seen as socially acceptable to be racist. Another example is an IQ test. Now, there's quite a lot of debate and discussion as to whether it actually measures intelligence or whether it measures things like education, the opportunities you've had, the amount of books you've read, the amount of random facts that you happen to know, and whether that accurately measures something like intelligence. Now, um, validity and extraneous variables. So it's really important that if extraneous variables aren't controlled by the researcher in an experiment, they can influence the results. So this reduces the validity. So thinking about if it's valid, it's measuring what it's supposed to measure. But if you've got all these external or extraneous variables, you don't know whether that's that's had an effect on your results or whether it's been the independent variable that you were hoping would have an effect. So um, I guess in a, in a very basic explanation, the presence of any extraneous variables means that you're going to have decreased validity because you can't ensure that any change was because of the independent variable. Okay, now external validity. Now, often results obtained in research, they lack this kind of validity because they can't really predict what's going to happen outside of that world that's been constructed in the lab. So a great example of this is sleep studies. Now, if you are in a small room in a sleep research lab, you are hooked up to all kinds of wires, you're in a foreign environment, there could be noises, the way that you're going to sleep could be very different to the way that you would normally sleep at home in your own environment. So for results to have external validity or high external validity, they need to be valid out in the real world. Okay, let's switch over now to reliability. So this refers to the consistency and stability of the results. So basically, if you took the same test a number of different times, if that test is reliable, you should be getting the same results each time. So if the results fluctuate, then it means that other factors may be impacting these test scores. So for example, an unreliable intelligent test results in a significantly lower score. Did you lose intelligence? So if you took the same or if you took an intelligent test once every week and you just kept getting these different scores and they were just really rapidly declining, does that mean that you're losing intelligence or that perhaps it's just unreliable? Okay, so if you're a bit confused at the moment, that's okay. These can be quite hard concepts to understand. So to give you a bit of an example, I want you to think about two different rulers. So you can see them on the right here. This top one is made out of wood and the bottom one is a tattoo of a ruler on someone's arm. But the thing about this top wooden ruler, it has incorrect markings. So it's been made by someone who wasn't sure about their measurements and while it gives the same exact same measurements each time, they are completely wrong. All right, it could be giving you um, this weird measurement that your page is 65 centimeters. Now it's going to measure the same, you're going to get the same measurement every single time you use this dodgy ruler, but it's not a correct measure. Okay. Now on the other hand, this tattoo ruler down the bottom, every time you measure, you are going to get a slightly different result. Now this is because your, your skin expands with heat, maybe you lose weight, maybe you gain weight, um, maybe you can stretch the skin as you're trying to give it a go or you've moved your arm in a different way, you're going to get a completely different result every time. And this result also isn't going to be correct 
at all. You know, by fluke, once it might give you a perfectly accurate measurement, but there is no way of knowing that. So I want you to think about here, which one is reliable, which one is valid, all right? Have a bit of a think about each of those and pause the video here. Okay, so this top ruler here, it is reliable because you're getting the exact same result each and every time you use it. However, it's invalid because it's not measuring what it's supposed to measure. Um, this bottom ruler is unreliable because you are getting a completely different result every time. And it's also invalid because it's not measuring what it's supposed to measure because it's all over the place. It's, it's that, that, you know, that kind of measure, the way of measuring the length of something is just, it's not valid. It's not going to get the results that you want. Okay, so based on that ruler situation, a measure can be reliable but not valid. So that was our ruler. It can give you the same results every time, but the results are kind of, they're not, they're not correct or valid. However, a measure can't be valid unless it's reliable. Because if it's not going to give you the same result every time, well, of course, it's not going to measure what it's designed to measure. Now, if you would like more information on this or you're not quite sure still, um, of course, ask me some questions and feel free to check out these resources as well. See you guys.